Additional warning, this video does contain racism and mutilation of a body. Jasper, Texas, June 7th, 1998. Jasper is a town near the Texas-Louisiana border. In 1998, the population was 7,600, according to the U.S. Census. The 2020 U.S. Census shows the population decreased to 6,884. There is still a large population of Black people who still reside in Jasper. During my research, it had been repeated more than once that Jasper swept a lot of racism under the rug. It was very overt. I remember when I first heard about this story in 1998. I first remember thinking, the devils, that's what I said. You have to be a devil to do something as demonic as this. 49-year-old James Bird Jr. was raised in Jasper. He had been there pretty much all of his life. His parents, James and Stella Bird, like many black families, lived in East Texas, Jasper. They were part of a large church community. James also sang and played the piano in the church, along with his seven siblings. Stella Bird was a Sunday school teacher, and his father, James Sr., he was a preacher. In 1967, James was the last class in the high school to be segregated, where he attended J.H. Rowe High School. Unlike his siblings that went to college, James did not. Though he was an excellent student, that's not the path he would follow. He married in 1970. He had three children, Jamie, Renee, and Ross. Unfortunately, he had a vice, alcoholism. In 1993, he would divorce. He still stayed in his children's life, and he still had a decent relationship with his ex-wife. Between 1969 and 1996, James had been incarcerated several times, things like forgery, petty theft, and violating his probation. He started to try to get his life back on track. During those years, he attended an alcohol anonymous. He was a fixture in the community. He didn't own a car, so you'd see James walking from here to there, wherever he needed to go. James was still well liked in this small community. People stopped all the time and they would offer him rides. It was a night of June 7th. James would walk for the last time. He had just left a function from his parents' home. About three miles down the road, that's where James actually lived. He would tell his family that he was calling it a night and he would head home. James may have been feeling good. Not only did he see his relatives that he hadn't seen in a while, it was a good evening for him. However, his daughter, Jamie Bird, she says that she felt her dad wasn't acting like himself. She couldn't put her finger on it. Did he know? Did he know what was about to happen? Did he feel something awful was about to happen? This probably was something that would run through her mind a lot of times. So James would leave and he would take that long walk home. In the humidity of the June's night air, on that three mile long dirt road walk home, it again would be the last one. Three young men were on that dirt road as well. They claimed to be looking for a party around 2.30, 2.45 in the morning, idle hands. In an extremely loud, dark colored pickup truck is what a witness said. The driver, Sean Barry, 
23 years old, Lawrence Brewer, 31 years old, and John King, 23 years old. All three men had spent some time in prison for various convictions. The details I couldn't find. I know John had an involvement with an underage girl and the Jasper police was looking into that crime around the time of this tragedy. Sean and John had been friends since high school and they remained close after. While in prison, John had met Lawrence. The two were involved in a lot of white supremacy while they were locked up. Lawrence would move into John's apartment when he was released from prison. Lawrence had only been a free man just a few weeks before all three men would engage in this horrible crime. Beforehand, the three men were drinking beers, looking for young women, and searching for this so-called party, but they saw James Bird. They said they offered a walking black man at 2.30, 2.45 a.m. a ride. Really? Why would they do this? Why would this group, who really wanted nothing to do with black people, help a black man out? However, James was clueless. He didn't know. James accepted. James got into the cab of the dark colored pickup. He had no idea. He didn't know what was really going to happen. A witness would contest to seeing this. However, James wasn't taken home. He was taken to a clearing, a wooded area nearby. Police say they believe that a fight occurred by the way the clearing looked, like a struggle had happened. Drugged up dirt and shattered beer bottles and blood. It was lots of blood. They said that they wanted to teach James a lesson. That's what the three said. What lesson did James need to be taught? All three of the men violently beat James. They would spray his face with black spray paint. They urinated and defecated on him. Lawrence told police that James' throat had been cut by Sean, but he was still alive. He was bleeding out. They would tie him by his ankles with a chain attached to the truck, and they would drag his body three entire miles at speeds very fast. Forensic evidence would suggest that James tried to keep his head up. He only couldn't when his body hit a culvert. James was dead. His body mangled and destroyed. They would take what was left of his body and throw it on the Black's only side of the cemetery in Jasper. This was supposed to scare the black people of Jasper to let them know that they could be next. This was their warning. All three of the devils, after killing this innocent black man, just trying to get home, would later go and enjoy themselves at a barbecue. In actuality, they were not looking for this party. They were looking for a, quote, nigger or a Jew to kill, end quote. Or at least that's what one of them were thinking at that moment. Maybe all of them were thinking at that moment. It had been in the back of their minds for a while. Their white power and their KKK tattoos all over their bodies had given them that extra boost to do what they needed to do. It's what they had fantasized about or watched in old racial tension Southern videos or listening to stories that Papa had told when he was a youngin in his prime. I'm not quite sure, but the hate was real 
and the hate was in them and they wanted to act on it. It really didn't matter who the victim was. It didn't matter that he had parents that loved and cared about him. He had a 16-year-old daughter who admitted that at the time, being naive to racism of that magnitude. She said that she had friends of all races. A son a little bit older who had a career in the military fighting for the country while the three men were viciously killing his father. No, it didn't matter. The three white men did not care about that. They only cared about putting the fear in a black man. They would have to team up in order to do this. They would have to trick him in order to do this. James King called himself a racist and he was open about it. And the two other men were too. They wanted to prove that they were more than their tattoos. They wanted to form the KKK in Jasper and they wanted younger white boys and girls to look up to them and they wanted to set the example. They wanted the groups of white men with hatred to kill someone because their skin was darker or their hair was a different texture or they believed in a different religion or they loved a certain gender. They would use James to start their race war or recruiting other white people who may want to join the clan. King wanted this to be big and he was right. It was big. It made U.S. history. Hours after James was tricked into giving a ride, he was kidnapped. Neighbors on the road started to find body parts. Motorists started to find body parts. One person saw shoulders, only shoulders, in her yard. She screamed and she called the police. Another saw dentures ahead. The grisly crime. I'm sure is still etched in the people's memories that saw this years later. How could it not be? 81 identifiable parts of James. Even his wallet with his identification was thrown, ripped, shattered, torn, broken, severed along the road. The long road would tell the sick, twisted, horrifying story filled with hate. The police work was easy. It's a small town. Plus, these idiots left more of the evidence at the crime scene. Warrants had been used checking their residence. There was white racist propaganda, books, pamphlets filled with rants, the Jasper police would investigate the crime and the FBI had assisted in it as well. Sean Berry's tools with his last name was found at the crime scene. A cigarette lighter belonging to Lawrence was found at the crime scene with his nickname on it. It would be Sean who would break down and tell all. The police said it took less than 10 minutes before he was spilling his guts. The DNA of all three men and the blood of James was on clothing back at the apartment rented by James King. Even Sean Berry's truck that hadn't been washed well still had the DNA. Even James Burr. DNA was on the truck. All three men were arrested. To briefly go into it, the Bird family, they just wanted peace. The KKK came from around the surrounding area. They would show up. They said that Jasper was now clan land and that there was nothing that anyone could do about it, that they were taken over. 
the Black Panther Party. They showed up as well, opposite them. Nothing happened. Nothing happened that day in Jasper. The overt racism still was presenting itself. This was James Byrd Jr.'s fault. The racists would find ways to blame him. They blamed him for being beat up by three white supremacists. They blamed him for being defecated and urinated on and drugged until his body was severed. They blamed him. It was all his fault. Sean Barry received life in prison. Lawrence Brewer and the ringleader, John King, they received death sentences. Lawrence Brewer was executed on September 21st, 2011. James King, who had always stated he wished he had the chance to do it all over again, he would do it the same exact way. No regrets. John King had always stated he wished he had the chance to do it all over again. He would do it the same way. No regrets. He tried to appeal his case, but he was denied. He really didn't want to die. I guess he thought he would just be released. I guess he wanted to jump on the passenger side of his best friend's ride and look for underage girls. Jasper police didn't understand. If you are so proud of what you've done, just take your sentence like a man. But he wasn't a man. He was a coward and he was filled with hate. 21 years after James Byrd Jr. After his death, his family would finally receive justice. John King was now at the state penitentiary in Huntsville, Texas. During the preparing of the execution, he kept his eyes closed. While the witnesses arrived to the death chamber, he never turned his head. He never looked at anybody. He never acknowledged anybody. But why would he? The warden, Bill Lewis, would ask, was there anything that he wanted to say? Did he want to give his last and final statement? With his eyes still remaining closed, he just replied, no. King was given a lethal dose of penna barbitual. He took a few breaths and had no movement. Twelve minutes later, he was dead at 7.08. Even a Jasper police officer, a white man, I might add, said it wasn't fair. That James Byrd died an agonizing, horrendous, horrific death. But John King, he appeared to have just fallen asleep wasn't fair. Clara Taylor, James Bird's sister, she watched King die. She said, quote, he had no remorse then and no remorse tonight. The execution for this crime was not punishment. I felt nothing. No sense of relief. No sense of happy. This is over with. End quote. The family had to try to get past this somehow, to try to get on with the rest of their lives. Easier said than done. The family did find some type of healing in their own ways. The family found James Bird Foundation. They offer scholarships to people of color and they have a diversity workshop and there's even a James Bird Park. 
the children of all colors play at that park. The cemetery that had been segregated for all those years, all those decades, it's now desegregated. There was a James Byrd Hate Act that came into law. It covered everything from discrimination of people of color to their religion, disabilities, and even their sexual preferences. John King, he wanted this to be big, but I don't believe this was the way he exactly wanted it. He was hoping the three probably wouldn't have got caught and they would continue to terrorize the people who were different in Jasper. Jamie Bird, James Bird's daughter, who was 16 when her father was taken away from her, she said that she had to let go of her anger and she had to evolve into a better person. She is a 12-year veteran on the Houston Police Department as of 2022. Cases like her father and even George Floyd that she brought up, those cases became a voice for her to the prejudices and she says she stands up on the right side of the fence. And she believes that her father, like I do, is proud of her. The son, Rosberg, who couldn't fight for a country while his father was being murdered. The evening of the execution, he actually said, quote, you can not fight murder with murder, end quote. He told them that life in prison for John King would be fine. That shows the kinds of cloth that James Bird's children come from. Unfortunately, there were a lot of hate crimes before James Bird's murder and during and most definitely a lot after. I would say to a racist person, and I always say this to anybody listening to me, if you are racist, be who you are. You don't have to kill somebody because of their complexion being darker than yours. You honestly don't have to do that. But if you have hate so deep in your heart, that it just consumes you. Your problem is not racism. To watch a man go home and to pick him up and to do that, or to get a job as a police officer just because you may get off with killing a person of another race or sexuality, you have problems far more greater than racism. <laughs>